Hi to everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Debauchery Circus Campaign here on the Random Rhapsody Network. I'm Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and GM, and joining me around the virtual table today are Brandy, Bree, John, Jr., and Steven. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hey. Howdy. Hola. (laughs) Okay. Now, before we begin, I have a couple of announcements to do. The first of which is that one of our players from the Fab Five sent everyone in the group a present that you all should have now. Yes. um, He asked us to open them on camera. Let me grab that then. Oh, I wanted. Do you want to have a knife I can borrow? I left mine at work. Just use your teeth. But my teeth are so pretty. (laughs) Uh, Matthew, yours is actually upstairs on the kitchen table. Oh. I'll give it to you later. Holy crap. That's a set of D6s, and it looks like it has the random wraps the logo on it. Yes. Wait, really? Whoa! We're branded merchandise. Yeah, uh, he Joe loves the show. Obviously, he loves playing, and he wanted to try out the idea of making dice with our logo on it and see how they looked. So he he got these D sixes for everybody, and they look great. Yeah, looks I think, good, yeah, I think they're awesome. And the logo's really clear. Yeah. Thank you. Glittery. Yep, our very own official random rhapsody dice. So. Uh, thank you, Joe Trotter. Um, we absolutely appreciate you getting these to everybody. I like them. Um, so, yeah. Now, so- something we were talking about doing is um, we're talking about doing some more things like this um, in the new year. Not only dice, but other merchandise as well. I don't know about anybody else, but I kind of want to wear a random Rhapsody logo t-shirt. Um, especially when we stream. So I'm probably going to, I'm going to make some of those up and I'm going to order. If anyone wants one, you'll be able to order them too. And I'll put them up on our website in case anyone else wants to get one. See, now I'm just imagining like jerseys with the random Rhapsody logo on the front um, and then our character name on the back. After a while, make a hockey jersey. I would buy that so fast. I mean, we have the option of doing a lot of different stuff because there's websites yeah. out there where you just put your logo into their system and they make it and then you yeah. pay for it. And we get a little bit of money back from anybody who buys it, which could just helps uh, support the show doing advertising and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's probably what we're going to do. Um, we're going to be working it out and hopefully it'll be done by New Year. Um, we'll keep you up to date with that. Um, I'm also happy to announce that the date of our next holiday one shot is out. Um, The next one shot is going to be on Monday, December the 27th, right after Christmas. This one is going to be hosted by Joe Trotter, the guy who made us all these dice. Um, And we're going to have some, we're going to have both players from the campaigns playing, as well as some special guest stars um, in the episode as well. You can keep up to date on everything we're doing by following us on Facebook at Random Rhapsody TV or on Twitter as random underscore Rhapsody. Okay, that should do it for the announcements. Um, Joe's actually in chat right now, and he's saying, you're welcome, people. So thanks, Joe. You're awesome. Thanks, Joe. Okay, so that's it for the announcements. So join us as we dive into the world of Laropa and continue on with the adventures of the Debauchery Circus.
When we last left off, the martial fighters of the debauchery circus had entered themselves into a martial arts tournament at the Erudite Conclave. Deep within the lower levels of the Great Library, the team sparred off against the Lore Master's finest warriors. The matches against the Conclave monks were difficult, but in the end, Shokan battled her way into the final round of the tournament and even emerged victorious against her tabaxi opponent. Her prize one of the Conclave's highly sought-after belts, as well as the promise of a one-on-one -on -one training session with Ohm, the master monk of the Conclave. With the tournament complete, Cameron enlisted the A's of Blazenir and Willow to assist him in examining the li laboratory of Cameron's disappeared master. Utilizing his familiarity with the Institute Arcanum, Cameron led the trio through the Wizards College while he and Blazenir also used their magic to keep themselves hidden and silent. Inside the lab, Cameron was finally able to dispel the magic circle he had found, and he, had, and he realized that the device was, in fact, a component used to power the chronomatic energy detector the old wizard had been building in his spare time. Cameron attempted to identify a crystal fragment that he found inside a lead chest, but the noise from the resulting explosion that hit him and embedded the crystal in his ear also alerted a patrolling guard who quickly came to investigate. Blazenir disguised himself as the commander of the Institute's spell shields, and, with Willow's help, barely managed to convince the confused half-orc to return to his rounds so that Cameron could copy down the locations that had lit up on the globe. With these new clues in hand, the squad hightailed it out of the Arcanum before they could be discovered. And with this task now complete, the team regrouped with Edmund Coltrass to set out on their next adventure. The young lord had acquired for the group a pair of wagons filled with supplies to make the group appear to be a full-fledged circus, including tents and various other supplies. The squad soon departed North Mia, heading south along the main road, making their way towards Coltrast Keep. On the second day of their travel, the circus discovered that a group of armed soldiers on horseback were keeping pace with them, a short distance behind, about 300 or so feet. They were unsure who was following them, so the group decided to halt their progress and move off the road to allow the new group to overtake them and see who they are. And so, debauchery circus. It is about midday at this point, or maybe just a touch later. You have halted your horses and wagon in a small section of road near a small cluster of trees and shrubbery to either side of the well-worn dirt road you've all been traveling down. You can all probably see the group of men on horseback riding closer towards you now. They're still a good 200 or so feet north of you, but they're getting closer with each passing moment. The skies above you are slightly overcast, but it's still very clear out, and I'm sure you can all distinguish the fact that there are five riders approaching you. The man in the center of the group is clad in a rather splendid-looking armor, plate armor that makes him seem like a knight or something like that. But before they can get any closer to you, a question comes to each of your minds. And that question is, are there any social or political issues you feel particularly strongly about. And since Cameron, uh, you are the, the one to roll, why don't we start with you? Mm. I'd say probably something along the lines of the lifting of the collective conscious. That sort of like social responsibility that you have to make sure that everyone is making smarter decisions instead of just, you know, blindly following as some are off to do. Okay, interesting. Ichabod, how about you? Uh, 
socially, I would say I'm concerned um, for the religious uh, purity of people's souls and whether or not they're taking accountability for their own actions. And then politically, um, I'm, I've got a vested interest in protecting the, the simple culture of my country of golferin, um, which is fighting a war on three fronts. So, Indeed. Indeed it is. Willow, how about you? I would have to say slavery. <laughs> Since she was uh, marked as uh, basically a slave for the rogues guild. She doesn't want anyone anyone to go through that, especially any kids. Indeed. Uh, slavery is a thing that the uh, Cerulean Syndicate is well known for. Supplying, especially in the Margarden Federation. Shokan, how about you? Shokan's rather simple. Lives a very simple life. Shokan really only cares about where the road ahead of her leads. I like it. Definitely the wandering type Shokan is. Blazenir, how about you? Uh, I... I haven't the slightest clue. <laughs> well, I mean, I, as as a druid, there you do tend to be among the trees and don't really see a whole lot of the world. So I could see that. <laughs> Literally lives under a rock. Does that sound about right, Blazner? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he also probably would make an effort not to understand polit- politics, but yeah. That's Just... fair. That's fair. Okay. Well. Well, as I said, the Bachri Circus, um, the group on horseback are approaching closer with each passing moment. They seem to have slowed a bit now, uh, moving their horses into more of a trot than anything else. And you have maybe about 10 or 15 minutes before they'll likely overtake you. Now, Willow, you had said that you want to spend, find some place, uh, some cover before, before you all stopped. So you found a place to stop at a section of road that has a couple of tall spruce trees with a good vantage point. Um, some shrubbery, a pine tree, that sort of thing. Um, I'll go ahead and show everybody the map just so <laughs> they can see what, I, what it is I'm talking about. But uh, Debauchery Circus, um, what are you wanting to do first? Do y'all think that we should move the wagons off the road, or should we be prepared to to start fleeing? Well, uh, I have one question. Uh, this is the only road between the two towns, yes? So why do we think they're even coming after us? Because they were increasing speed as we increased speed. Oh, um, okay, I see. It. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be trying to keep us within their sides. The moment you think someone's not after you is the moment you get killed. Well, it's it's more of just you know again. This is the own. I think it's probably road best road if we are if we are all grouped up. I could turn into a bird and could, check them out. That might be a good plan. Uh, it would uh, you know, diminish my uh, whole turning into stuff capabilities, but it's uh, better than just sitting here. Yeah, I think it's best if we spread out a little bit, and perhaps some of us can try to get the drop on them. Um. But we should be prepared for things to go south. I just look over at Blaze near. Don't get turned into the. Admit to nothing. (laughs) What? Exactly. All right. Um, Are you saying they're going to capture me if I turn into a bird? No. No. Just fly overhead. If they attempt to speak to you and accuse you of anything. Listen, I've been down this road many times. I was in a traveling troop. We have to skirt by the law. Quite a few times. I think our time is running short, so it's best that we uh, jump into action. Yes, bird time. Uh, I turn into an eagle or something. Okay, uh, you turn into an eagle or something. I'm sure I can find an <laughs> eagle token. <laughs> and I would like to move off the road, perhaps uh, behind this tree a little bit. Uh, 
there you go, Turgot. You should be able to control an eagle now. Or please, I'm placing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna first, I'm gonna fly east and then try to swing back around to them so they they don't see that a eagle just came from the uh, wagons that they're following. Okay, so you fl- um you poof into an eagle. Um, you're level eight now, so you should be able to fly. I think. Yeah. And you go flying off into the air, soaring high up into the sky to before circling around to head back towards them. Now that takes a few minutes. So while while that's happening, um, Ichabod, you've moved your horse over to a nearby tree. It looks like Willow has moved over to the opposite one. <laughs> and you, you guys are positioning yourself near the tree, or what? What, what are you trying to do? Yeah, I just want to be lightly covered by the tree. I'm not very good at stealth, um, so I'm not really trying to hide. But I want to have a little bit of cover and then peeking around and watching up the road where they're coming from. Okay. Um, I want to tie my horse to the said tree, and then I want to come over here and get some cover. Okay, so there is a, a that's a down tree that's um, fallen probably you guess a few weeks to a month or so ago. It look, doesn't look too fresh, and you crouch down within the branches, hiding in there. Go ahead and make a stealth check. Stealth check with disadvantage. My favorite kind. Oh. Is there any other kind? <laughs> yeah. Yes, there is. I heard there's a couple other kinds. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to pull up my sheet. I'm very <laughs> I've let you down. Do Shokan and Cameron want to move those wagons off the road? That's what I was going uh, to ask next. So they couldn't kill all our horses in one blow? I was Just actually going to gonna leave the wagons there and then move in between the two wagons so that that way if they try and take a range shot at me, they'll have more stuff to hit. I'm concerned about the integrity of our horses. <laughs> Why? Nothing ever happens to our horses, ever. No, ever. I've never, never once... Nothing at- listen, no. uh, from all my experience in war, I found that you should take it down somebody's mount first. Yeah, but no one actually does that. Oh, what they if- do. These guys, this guy looks like a knight. Would it not be suspicious, though, if we all suddenly are taking the wagons off the road and everything? Are you trying to... Uh, worried about what they're gonna think of us? Like, cause I don't mind. I mean, I don't think we can really have this conversation anyways because we are not all together. Well, you're well, definitely well, spread well, out, so are you, yeah. like, yelling this across? Well, the- you said we have 15 minutes. I can trot over to them and, be- and chastise them a little bit and then go back <laughs> to my tree. <laughs> that's, that's fair. So, um... Sh- Blaze ne- or Cameron, you've jumped off your wagon and you're yep. hanging out between the two of them. Shokan, you and Edmund are still sitting on yours. Are you wanting to leave the the wagons there? I mean, I guess I'll pull the wagon off the side of the road. Okay, you're pulling your wagon off to the side of the road. Yeah, and then I mean, I guess I could just. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of what I was doing, but okay. You've still got one wagon. Just as long as they're not within, like, 30 feet of each other and somebody wanted to blast the horses with a fireball. <laughs> well, she's doing I imagine, that. I imagine the worst. Start talking to the horses. Make sure they're not freaking out. You're, you're going to leave yours in, your uh, wagon in the road, Cameron? Yep. Okay. Um, Blazenir, while the, the group is kind of... Um, running back and forth and figuring out where they're moving, you had time to circle around and you're coming within visual distance of this group. Now, as I said, it, there are five riders. Um, the one in the lead, they're they're kind of in a V position, you know, like Mighty Duck style. Um, one guy at the head, the, the rest of them spread out behind him. Uh, five of them in total. The one in the center um, is wearing, or actually, before I do that, go ahead and make a perception check. Now, since you are you, you can use. Uh, since you're a druid, I, you can I, use your abilities, not the the bird. No, I I have to use a oh, not the mental state. Wait, not the mental no, stuff. Physical. Never mind. Yes. Uh, yes do sir, I still get the, Do I still get the keen sight for with eagle? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is going to be good. 
25. Oh, yeah. You, with those eagle eyes, you can see way more than you would be able to just in your human form. You can see that the man in, in front is wearing a gleaming golden plate armor. Um, you can also see that he has a dark blue cape um, fluttering behind him as he rides. The man wears no helmet, um, however, and his long golden hair is swept backwards in the wind as he rides. He is carrying a lance with him, but it is pointed upward and resting against his shoulder at ease as he's riding. The two men on either side of him um, seem to be wearing what you recognize to be split armor, and their helmets are on, their, uh, so their faces are covered. You can't really tell what race they are, but they are proportionally sized that maybe one of the humanoid races, human of that si or that size. Um, they, too, are wearing cloaks of blue, as do the two dwarves who are the last in the last two spots of the V. These two men have heavy crossbows slung across their backs and seem to be wearing leather armor. Okay. Uh, do these guys look evil? I probably can't tell, but... <laughs> Maybe do insight... they look familiar? What Make... does evil yeah. look like? <laughs> Make an insight check, like I guess. Five guys riding with blue capes. That's what uh, it looks like. 27. That is pretty sus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, there is some susness about the fact that it's that there, it's just five men on horseback riding at a very quick pace. Um, you don't see any supplies or things of that nature, just arms and armor. Almost as though they're not really traveling on a journey, they're just traveling on horseback. That's really about the best I can... Like, there's no way to tell... If someone's good or evil, they don't admit mm -hmm. an aura. No, or I just, just like want to. I want to. Well, get they admit an aura to me. No. Yeah, but <laughs> but you with your twenty-seven insight, I can give you that it is a bit suspicious that they're just five armed men riding on horseback with no seeming supplies about their body. Right, right, and uh, that first guy doesn't have a helmet on, right? He does not. He okay, is, you know how? Yeah, you know how I'm a bird, right? Uh huh. There, can I can can there now be a speck of white in his hair? You can certainly <laughs> try. I'm trying to figure make, out exactly. Make an how. improvised attack. <laughs> I would I would I would think just dexterity, honestly. Yeah, I'm gonna say you're gonna be making a dexterity as your eagle, but you're gonna be a disadvantage because number one, you're not an eagle all that often, so you don't have great aim with your bowels. <laughs> the first time so but, and also that's a lot of um, math to try to figure out but it, you never know if if a man is on horseback what? traveling at a speed of 30 kilometers and a bird flies by horizontally at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour what yeah. is the trajectory of the bird's shit exactly i am not using pythagoras's theorem to figure <laughs> out how to shit on this I guy's head however i will allow you to make a yeah. dexterity check uh, at disadvantage with your i do need form. to Eagles dexterity, right? Yes. Uh, you should have uh, access to a sheet. I do not have access to a sheet. I gave you access to a sheet. It should be at the top of your um your the area where yeah, you have I, I understand that. I just, I just got to buy one info though. Oh, he's not approved to edit the sheet. Uh okay. He can see it, but he can't edit it. Can I spend my Twitch points to give him advantage? <laughs> not on if your you own. If you got him, no. <laughs> you cannot spend Twitch points on your own game. Sorry. <laughs> but you do now have your access to the eagle. Yeah. Okay. Dexterity. Oh, it's the same exact dexterity I have. All right. Oh my god. Oh, natural one. <laughs> yeah, natural one. You shit on yourself. You go. You're flying <laughs> through the air, circling around them. And you're, you're with your eagle eyes. You're looking at this guy. You're, you're aiming, trying to hit him. You shit. It goes flying through the air. Splat lands on the ground just as the guy passes. Unfortunately, oh. you missed entirely. Call call. But they are they are probably around a hundred or so feet away from. Everybody now, and you can see they are starting to slow. 
and they're starting to slow down. So let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to say you're probably right there, Blaze Deer. But um, as you can, as this group begins to approach and get a little bit, a little over a hundred or so feet away, they begin slowing down. And the man in the middle raises a hand up, uh, kind of fist clenched, um, signaling to the rest of his troop to slow down with him. You can all now make out the, the same distinguishing features that I described to Blaze near a few minutes ago. Do any of us recognize any of these folks? Yeah, can we can we make a roll? Uh, I mean, you can all make perception checks, certainly. Or if we recognize their cloak, maybe? Yeah, go ahead and make perception checks as they're starting to slow down. I just got a 10. I just rolled a natural one. <laughs> uh, do I make a new I perception 20. check? or No, Blaze near you okay. not. Didn't think so, but... You cannot, um, you definitely cannot make, um, recognize these individuals. You've never seen them before. Um, looks like, uh, Shokan rolled a 20 for perception. Shokan. While you're looking back, you're sitting on your wagon to the side of the road, uh, sitting next to Edmund. Edmund, by the way, I should mention, currently looks like a dwarf, a young dwarven man with a scruffy beard. You all noticed, um, you, you're all just now realizing that he's using his hat of disguise to change his <laughs> features. So that's the first thing you notice, Shokan, that uh, Edmund does he's, not look the same. He's starting to learn. Mm -hmm. um, he's looked. Uh, but when you look back at these individuals, you you show kind you don't recognize them at, per se as people. You've never seen these individuals before, but there is something you do recognize. On the breastplate of the man in armor, you see a group of uh, five black lacquered um, stars emblazoned upon his breastplate, um, and this stands out to you because you've seen someone with armor like this before. In fact, you're the only one of this group who would have seen this because none of them were a part of the group at this point. But you recognize this. Back in Florina Village, when you were in an inn having, drink, having drinks and breakfast, another night, a bald man with a big old goatee, uh, think the master from Doctor Who style, but with a bald head, had worn armor exactly like this. And that sticks out in your head with that 20 perception. That this man wears similar armor and is wearing the same cloak as that previous man. And remind me, was this previous guy is somebody that was a trustworthy guy or no? It was Portly Leone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Ichabod would not know that. Because no, I, I wouldn't. That's me out of character. Yes. But <laughs> okay, three, my bad. Yes. My bad. I, yeah, it's been a bit. Oh yeah, yep. this is uh, this was actually the group's second adventure together, where they met a man wearing very similar armor to this. I mean, I'm gonna kind of stiffen up, like you know, kind of crack my knuckles, ready myself, because you know I know these are probably not good guys. So the um, the group m continues forward at their slower pace, moving. Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Moving ahead about 40 or so feet, and they pull to a halt, standing right there. Um, you can, you, uh, Ichabod, and Willow, you two are closest, and probably Blazner as well, flying up overhead, can see that the man on armor, holding, he's holding his hand out to stop everyone, and he looks directly at you, um, Ichabod. And then he looks forward again, um, looking at the wagons. And he I'll says, step out from behind my tree to, to face him directly as a man. Howdy. The armored man says, What ho there, friends. Are you in need of aid? 
That we are not, con sir, though I appreciate the gesture. Uh, we just happen to notice that y'all seem to be keeping pace with us, and uh, frankly, we don't much like being followed. So if you could explain yourself, that would be uh, quite appreciated. Oh, I wouldn't say following you. Just passing along down the road and saw a small caravan ahead. Why not keep pace and keep an eye on things traveling down the road? You know how the roads can be these days. Bandits and such overtaking so many. A knight has a duty to keep an eye on those less fortunate than himself upon the road. Well, I see. It was an act of chivalry. In that case, my friend, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ichabod Sykes. I'm a servant of the father, and I tip my hat to <laughs> the the knight um, places a hand on his chest and bows his head towards you. Very well met, sir. I am Sir Bendleton. And, Bendleton. My, and these are my companions, members of the Five Star Knights. Five star knots. Now, I will admit I am a foreigner here, so I don't quite understand what that means, though I'm curious to learn more. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Yeah. Who are you? Persuasion. 16. Uh, while this happens, I'm going to swoop down and just land on I Ichabod's hat. Oh. So I'm nearby. If you shit on me, <laughs> specifically worry, if you shit on my hat. I emptied my tank out already, it's fine. Yeah, all right. He rolled a 13 on Do I seven. see that Shokan is getting ready for a fight? Shokan's like tense enough. Um, you're close by, make a perception check. Sure. 15. Okay. So, let's see. With your fifteen perception, I'd say you your look. You can see that um, Shokan looks a bit tense right now. Not <laughs> too much, but maybe a little stiff in her seat. Um, Ichabod, with mm -hmm. your your sixteen persuasion, the knight seems uh, kind of cocks his head to one side, and you notice his eyes flicker down to the to the. Um, what is that? To the west, to where you had seen Willow disappear mm -hmm. some time ago. His eyes flicker over there for a moment before returning to your you. And he says, what was your question again? You want to uh, I, I was curious if he would explain to me what the Star Knights were. Yeah. We are Knights of the Realm. Defenders of the of the kingdom of Radagast and all its members within. Okay. And you, sir, where do you hail from? Well, I, I too am a knight of sorts. Um, I'm a paladin of the father, um, of the order, the fist of the father. Um, and I hail from Golfrin. I too am here to protect the uh, residents of Radagast, as you say. Um, and in fact, I am just guiding this escort here. Um, so, uh, if your intentions truly are true, uh, you may feel free to pass us, and I will keep watch from behind. We have no, no business with your traveling caravan. Be at ease, and we are happy to pass you by and continue on with our own journey. Indeed, we hope to reach Balin Monastery before re this evening falls, and would like to carry on as quickly as we can. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, Pendleton? Bendleton? <laughs> Benelton. Benelton. B-E-N-N-E-L-T-O-N. -E -E okay. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, sir Benelton. Um, I hope that our paths should cross again. Indeed, indeed. What, what, what was your name again, sir? Ichabod Sykes, sir, servant of the father. Ichabod Sykes, I will remember that. Yes, and may, and may Bowers' blessing go with you. May the watchful eye of he who knows all be upon you as well. And mm -hmm. he gives you a bow before 
hitching his reins very loudly and very like show showy, mm-hmm. and uh, nods to his group, and they begin inching toward down the road. Do I know if he who sees all is Bowers? Make a religion. Or is he referring to another of the gods? Make a religion check. Mm-hmm. Religion. Ten. Don't worry. You Middle have, of the pack. You have never heard that term in your life. Mm, nope. Sounds like a heretic to me. <laughs> now, as the group gets closer to the wagons, the knight is watching your group as well, and all five of them seem to be very wary, warily eyeing you all. Mm-hmm. The knight what? looks to Shokan for almost for the first time, and he kind of stops short, and he. And his horse stops for a second. And he looks at you, Shokan, and he says, And you there, good turtle. I heard tale of a skilled member of your race recently. A master of hand-to-hand fighting who even fought to victory at the Erudite Conclave recently. That wouldn't perchance be you, would it? I look at him and I'm just like, No. No, that that must be a another turtle. I see you found some business with our caravan. Um, to try to urge well, him along. <laughs> hold on, hold on a sec. Um, Shokan, go ahead and make a deception check. I want to help. You're wanting to help. How are you helping? Yeah, I just want to kind of put the pressure on. Like he said, he has no business with us. So, so you found some business. You know, see if that makes him a little bit distracted. So he's like, oh yeah, I guess we should be on our way. So what did you roll, Shokan? Ooh. And I'll allow you to roll this with advantage, because Ichabod's kind of trying to help you out a bit. But you rolled yeah, seven. Sixteen. So. Yeah, sixteen. Um, the knight looks at you thoughtfully, and he says... Uh, peace, peace, Sir Sykes. <laughs> I just had was curious. I had heard about a leg- a very skilled fighter, total race, and we do not see the your people among among these lands too often. So I was curious, is all. Mm-hmm. He nods. He nods to you once again, seemingly believing you. With your 16. And once again, they start up and begin heading out. I watch him as he goes. I kind of nod to him, you know, as he looks at me. And I'm, you know, just kind of suspicious, but not trying to be overtly <laughs> suspicious of him. Yeah. Hmm. Well, he rolled a seven, so he doesn't really notice <laughs> this too well. Um, the horses kind of scoot in together as they go through the two wagons. Um, all members kind of eyeing you all, mm-hmm. but they don't seem to make any hostile action beyond beyond that. Um, watching you all warily, almost as though they're expecting you to attack at any moment too, which is reasonable on the road. And eventually they begin um, picking up speed as they pass, moving into a trot, and as and fanning out, they begin moving forward, disip- heading off down the road. Okay. I like to trot up towards my friends and look around and go, what do y'all make of this? He seems untrustworthy. I'm going to, I'll tell him what I know of. Or Port Leon, and and what mm-hmm. I want to, you know, for brevity's sake, we we'll just assume I go through all of it. And we had heard part of the story from um, the boy, yeah. <laughs> from Edmund's story, so we know that the Star Knights are working for um, Lord Veritude. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. sh- between Shokan and Edmund, and. Um, and Fantine before, while she was still with the party, the, the the group had discussed how while while the original members of the debauchery circus were in the the town of Florna, they had been um, basically provoked 
into attacking a group of knights that just soundedly beat the shit out of them. The group decided hey, to... I won't say soundedly. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was an really interesting bad, battle. Yeah, it's maybe not... if Fontaine had been there. Yeah, maybe if Fontaine had been there. Well, but, as know. Ichabod Sykes wouldn't have, wouldn't have sat that one out. <laughs> I'll let you but, know. But anyway, I digress. But um, d- when that happened, the group decided to go out for revenge and track them da- this group of knights down in the woods while this group of knights was trying to find a, um, a fortress hidden deep in the woods where a group of orcs had been holding Edmund hostage. The group, the the Bachi Circus, found the knights, be, beat the crap out of them. Though Veritu, mm-hmm. or not Veritu, but Sir Portleone did manage to escape, and the group eventually found the hidden uh, fortress where they rescued Edmund, and got the orcs to agree to a bit of an alliance to help them out um, against the common enemy, Lord Veritu, and the Five Star Knights. So, um, well. Shokan and Edmund together, because he wasn't there for all of it, but he was there for some of it. Um, As you all begin getting your wagons back together and moving close, you guys all kind of recap everything that had happened and what the five star knights, at least Sir Port Leon, had did did to the group. Well, in that case, I say we keep pace with them. Um... And then perhaps we can get the drop on them as they uh, set up camp for the night. Did he say they wanted to make it to the monastery by tonight? Or Yes, that's correct. Oh, by tonight. So in that case, I... I gotta say, Matt, like, I know you're saying, like, five guys who are star knights. Mm-hmm. I keep hearing five star knights and thinking, so uh, after we served you, knights. you might receive a... Uh, uh, questionnaire <laughs> about our service. Can I count on you to give us five stars? Five stars on you. Um, in that uh, case, I think we should keep pace with them, um, and then we can perhaps get the drop on them. I think it's best if these if these men are our enemies to take care of them while they're out here alone and not have anybody sneaking up behind us. Uh, I'm going to mime out uh, trying to ask if I should follow them. Absolutely, I think we're all going to follow him. Alright, I'm going to fly off and circle around for a bit, wait for them to actually start moving. Oh, they're moving at a steady pace now already. I'm I'm waiting for us to start moving. Yeah, I think we start going as... Well, in my opinion, if y'all agree, I'd like to start going as fast as possible to keep pace with them. Uh, There is but one small problem. What's that? Uh... Place near was the one uh, controlling this particular cart. Is it uh, beyond your capabilities? I know Blaze Near's got, uh, he's a man of many skills, but I should trust What's that uh, a man, even if you could study, take care of <laughs> But I can give it the old arcane college try, I suppose. Yeah, best of luck to you. Doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so you climb. Uh, Cameron climbs back up into the wagon. Um, yeah. If if you're expressing your worry about it, Edmund will get down and join you on on your wagon to at least help you out if you need it. Sure. Yeah, that's what I was gonna su- suggest. Either I or Edmund could. I nod like Edmund's inherently more capable to do it. <laughs> Yeah, the fourteen-year-old yeah. kid is a bit more is a bit more capable of it than that's a fourteen-year-old man right there. Yeah. Look, all I'm saying is I'm a small-sized creature with mm-hmm. a ten strength yeah, we and a see. plus two in animal handling. I I agree. So. No offense. <laughs> I mean, I've got a plus one in animal handling, so I'm not much better off. That's fair. At least you've got the strength, though. If they try and like wrestle out of your grasp, this is fair. Well, Edmund does have, Edmund is a bit more trained with horses. He is a noble, after all. He has a four in animal handling, so it's better than wow. horse, So Yay, so hey. I'll try and assist him then. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm chuckling up in the air just seeing <laughs> all this play out. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. Yeah. Um, so, I take off. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like, so as I said, it is uh, mid-afternoon at this point. Um, 
probably a little bit after lunchtime, and you all be, um, hitch up your horses again, uh, snap the reins, and take off. I would like everybody to make animal handling checks. Um, Edmund is going to do the one for Cameron, um, and he's going to get an advantage because Cameron's helping him. Um, yes. So Shokan and everyone else. That would be a nine for me. Question. Um, do I have to, since me and Salvatore have an ins- instinctive bond, which allows us to fight as a seamless unit? So you get it at advantage as well. Okay. Uh, do I have to because I'm a bird? No, you do not have <laughs> to because you're a bird. Yes, you have to make a check to handle yourself. However, I mean, you never know. However, I do need you to make a perception check to try to keep an eye on the group of knights who are racing down the road as um, you're also trying to keep up, um, keep around your group. So give me your perception check. Looks like... That's... So um, Edmund got an 11. So he's mm-hmm. trying to control the horses as best he can with Cameron. Um, but you all go, are going at a steady pace as well. Um, Ichabod, what did you get? I rolled, I rolled a six. I rolled like crap. Yeah. But my my horse also understands my language. So you're not <laughs> I, you're, you don't get thrown off um, at least. But um, between it's like this is like my familiar. Yeah. So hey, you guys are in a fight right now. All three of you had very bad. Um, animal handling checks. So, what? Uh, Willow, I need Willow to make one as well. Willow hasn't done hers yet. Can we just re-roll? Can we pretend that never happened? No. Afraid not. Um, Why did you roll at disadvantage? For fun. No. <laughs> but anyway, it's a nine. Um, so all I, of I you... I had it, like, still from the spell. Gotcha. <laughs> well, anyway... <laughs> With an 11, a 9, a 6, and a 9. Well, we're all dead. Yeah, well, you're not all dead. Uh, no, you did, The horse didn't throw you off or anything like that, but you're having a hard time keeping up. The, the knights are definitely riding at a much faster pace than you, your group is with the wagons, and they're easily outdistancing you. Um... Blazenir, with your 19 perception, you are able, able to keep an eye on them, flying ahead, um, basically keeping the distance between your group and their wagons, which are lagging behind, and the knights, which are speeding ahead. Um, eventually, you're going to have to make a choice after about a couple hours of riding. Do you want to k- stay within sight of your group? Or sight of the enemy. Uh, on my own, on this decision. Um. Yep. Yeah. Try to stop them. I think. I think I would. Uh, not knowing what's going on with my group, I would try to keep up with the enemy. Okay. I, I don't realize. I don't well, realize all of them are horrible at handling horses, and yet all of them have horses. Like actually, it turns out one of us is a wear horse. We just never told you. <laughs> So, um, like, you can see that they're lagging behind. You can see that the that the knights in front of you are going at a very fast pace, but your group, um, with the two wagons and, um, J- and uh, Ichabod and Willow on the horseback, they're just having a hard time keeping up. And most of them are trying to stay together, and that's why... I was saying there, you're, you have to make the choice because one group's going yeah, super no. fast, one's going mm-hmm. super slow. So if you're keeping pace with with uh, the men on horseback, um, how long can you maintain your uh, animal your animal shape? Four hours per wild shape, so I've got eight hours technically. Well, so at four hours, um, you would if if you don't land, you're gonna poof. No, you can uh, you can expend it when. Oh, that's right. Going. Can you? Okay. I think so, yeah. I mean, I was just going to say you'd poof out in the air, fall a little bit, then poof again. You were going <laughs> to yeah, take damage. That wasn't going to be Then they damage. might see him. Yes, but yeah. they might see you. So you might want to double check on that. Yeah, you didn't. You then revert to your form unless you expend another use of the feature. Okay, then yeah, you're good. Then you can do it for a total of eight hours. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop up a map for y'all. And then I can also... Oh, no, I don't have polymorph. Uh, uh, never mind. I have again. polymorph. Now you should poop on him again. Get him to pull over. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work this Wait. time, I swear. Do I have another one stored up? I mean... I don't well, think you've been flying for a little while. <laughs> Nothing gets your bowels moving like some good exercise. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to reload roll 20, so give me a second. To roll constitution. <laughs> Anesthetic is uh, in chat right now, and she just sent a bunch of, bunch of bits our way, so thanks, Anesthetic. Yummy. Okay, there you go. I just shared with y'all a map. So if you look at the map, um, that red dot mm -hmm. there, that's where you all encountered the knights. They're going to the monastery. Now, Balaam Monastery is the monastery directly south of you, so and that's where they said they're going. Now, they seem to be going at a pretty fast pace. Mm -hmm. you, you estimate as you're riding down, looking at the map as you're going, um, it's going to be nightfall before you guys reach the monastery it's it's it would you would probably have to ride another three four hours to reach the monastery if you wanted to get there is it going to be nightfall before they reach the monastery at the page you're going it's hard it's you're, you're not sure it, it they mm -hmm. might it might be but they're definitely going to be getting there before you are just judging by the fact that they're so far ahead of you right now your group on in, on your wagons and on horseback can no longer see the riders ahead of you. Well, what did their say... horses look like? What's that? <laughs> what did their horses look like? No, I'm I'm asking like uh sorry, like physical condition like is the pace that they're going something that is tenable for their horses to maintain or are they going so fast that, you know, there's a chance one of their horses gives out or they, you know, miss something in the road and their horse stumbles and trips or something? Make, I, I think, I'm going to say make another ha animal handling check. If you can ma sure. make a high enough roll, you have enough knowledge about horses that you could guess that. I would 14. also like to give it a go. 14. A 16. Um, so Ichabod, you definitely would have recognized the horses. Um, Cameron, the lead horse, the lead, uh, knight's horse looks a lot like Ichabod's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, the rest of the, the men on horseback, they all have riding horses. They, they're pretty damn fast. Whereas you guys have mostly pack horses. So, you know, the differences between the horses in D and D. Yeah. So there's a riding horse, there's a pack horse, and then the leaders is a war horse. Yeah, and that's what, yeah, it's similar to what uh, Ichabod's is. Well, yeah. I, I guess we should just continue on, and if we see them making camp um, as we approach, then that's our chance. And if they make it to the monastery, then we should just continue on our way. Uh, I have a question. Do I know about how far away my group is? Um, you chose to keep riding with them, so when you uh, I, when you get to about your sixth hour of flying, you are far enough ahead that you cannot see your group. Okay. The group that you are following is continuing on down the road at yes. that same steady, very fast pace, heading for the monastery. Um, you cannot like see. Well, let I would say that if you flew high enough. Into, into the sky where you can see them as just basically a speck on the landscape, you could probably see the monastery at, at the very edge of your distance. Because, like, I was wanting to eventually, uh, if it took, if, you know, my companions just didn't catch up, just a spike growth the road, just to slow them down. But if... if you can't cast spells in wild shape. Well, I would have dropped it to do it, but if, if, it's, if it's been six hours and I wouldn't do it, yeah, it's been six oh, hours, and uh, unless you're that. unless you're you're telling me like I'm trying to understand what you're what you're saying you would do you're doing well, right at the so, four hour mark. Yeah, like, four hour mark. I would be in the tree and then do it, and then 
see what happens. So are you? Mm-hmm. Uh, so are, are you wanting? Are you saying you're wanting to like fly ahead of these people and if try I were to my growth and yeah, I would I would fly ahead, get into a tree and cast it on the road. But if if I already I, use my second wild shape, then I would. I like it. Well, no, I, I, well, I, you can feel time passing, so I feel like you would know before you had to use your wild shape and make well, this decision. Like it, you aren't just like, oh, whoa, look at the time. I guess it's time for me to wild shape again. It, it's it's more of a, it's more of I didn't want to roll back time for this. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Okay. So at the four hour mark, or as you're getting close to the four hour mark. Your the group would definitely be far enough ahead that you could not see your own group. Mm-hmm. If you're getting right. close to that four hour mark, you would know at least at least enough of the passage of time to know when your wild shape is getting close to ending. However, you've also been following this group the whole time, and you're probably pretty high up in the sky. What I'm trying to I'm not entirely sure if you'd have enough time to get ahead of them. And cast a spell. But we can try. Make a roll. Exactly. So what this is going to be is this is going to be a dexterity check as your eagle. Your um if you can beat a DC of sixteen, because it, it's it's gonna be pretty high because you have to get ahead of them quickly enough to get down, find a tree, hide in a tree, revert back to your shape, and cast the spell before these guys see you. So it's not it's a difficult challenge. But if you yeah. want to try to do it, I'll allow it. Use your guidance. You can't uh, cast a spell as no, a bird. No, yeah, you can't. I... <laughs> Straight dexterity check as a bird to try to get ahead of them, and um, then it's going to be a perception check to find a tree and be able in a stealth check to hide if you can accomplish these three things you will have enough time to yep. cast the spell in front of them so if you want to do this i will allow it but th- i'm telling you ahead of time i also i also have another thing but that's not very uh, i'm I'm, st- I'm flipping back and forth between two things right now cuz i can also encase them in a wall of fire if i wanted to Quick decision, because mm-hmm. you, yeah. you are alone, um, you are by yourself in eagle form, your um, friends are probably at do least an hour, more likely to work. And <laughs> uh, your, your friends are likely an hour or more behind you. Mm. You do not know what you're doing, you're riding ahead. You're flying ahead of them. But if you, uh. want to try to, if you want to try to do this, you can do this. These are the parameters, you have 30 seconds to decide. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, let's see. An hour and behind yeah, me. He is I don't think it's um, worth it. about Honestly, to do yeah, it's, it, it's pointless. Yeah, uh, I would just get murked immediately, unless I wall fired him and just. But that's only for a minute, two minutes if I uh, keep it up for two spell. Okay. And yeah, no, um, I'll just follow. You're it, just gonna keep worth, following. It's not worth it if they're over you an sure? hour behind me. If they're over an hour behind me. Yeah. If it would take us an hour to get there, then. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I, like good. I said, you've been flying far ahead of them. You know, and I, I uh, if I'm alone casting spells at them, even if I, you know, even with uh, either of them, I would just get murked at afterwards. So, no, it's not worth it. Okay, so you're just going to keep following them? Yep. Okay. Well, you are able to follow them. They continue their fast pace for the better part of the day, and... As the sun is slowly beginning to set, it's about seven hours that you've been flying, um, following this group. And at that seven-hour point, the reason I'm bringing it up is you can see the monastery ahead. It'd probably take them another hour and a half, maybe two hours to get there. But you can see it is definitely looking like that's their destination. The monastery itself, which I'll pull up one second. The monastery itself is a stall square stone building um, that's located on the the southern side of the road there. Um, You can see 
it's only a two-story building. It's not very big, um, and it sits high up on a hill. The group of riders is definitely heading in that direction, but like I said, it'd probably take them a good two hours or so to reach there, but you can see them at your height flying. You assume your group is somewhere behind you, but you don't exactly know where. So what are you wanting to do? Are you going to follow them until they get there? Uh, it's, at a, it's like an hour and a half, two hour. You're away. guessing. You're guessing at this point, I'm but guessing, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. Uh, they go past town, but I don't think they will. So, uh, I'm gonna circle back to caravan and try to at least. Uh, I'm gonna stay low to ground because I know I'm running out. You can. You you do know that you have an hour left, and if you want to circle back around and start heading towards the group, you know you got ten minutes before your your wild shape is gonna revert, and you can land before your time runs out. So you're not in any danger of being yeah. hurt. And um, you turn around and you fly back for another hour. And by the time the sun sets, you land, you revert back to your normal human form, and you begin just walking down the path, waiting for your group to catch up. And eventually they do, the rest of you. Um, you've been chasing down the road as fast as your horses and your carts can carry you. Um, but I doubt any of you wanted to stray too far from the party. So eventually you do meet up again with Blazedeer, walking down the road, waiting for you all. And you can pull to, the, to a stop to, to gather him back up again. Uh, howdy, y'all. Uh, well, you see anything? I'm very exhausted, but uh, yeah. they were riding fast. I, I wanted to, uh, you know, slow them down a bit, but uh, you guys are very slow. Oh my god. Yeah, god. not sure what's what's going on today with Salvatore. I'm an usually, academic. Usually we are perfectly seamless. Do you guys need my help with animals? Because honestly... Yeah. You know what? Uh, because I'm not very good at it. I'm going to cast Speak with Animals on myself and just kind of <laughs> try to get the horses to actually cooperate. Well, uh, I'm not sure if there's much point to it now. Um, I say we just continue on our way uh, for a little bit into the night, and and if they happen to make up camp before breaching the monastery, then we can get them there. And if not, then we just go. They they have like an hour and a half uh, ride to it. Yeah, which they're probably already there by now. Honestly. Well, let's continue. <laughs> You don't. You sure you don't? I cast a spell already. I can just. Well, appear. I mean, what's? But what's the point? Like, does because, it matter if we're well, slow? Yes. We're gonna stop and make camp anyway. Like, they're gonna. Re- it's more of just I'm annoyed and want to do something about it. All right. It's okay. Um, Blaze near you. Cast speak with animals on on yourself, and the horses are um, all look to you. You can speak to any any one of them. Most of them, uh, I always imagine horses when I do the horse voice. It sounds like Mr. Ed. Well, hello there, Blaze near. What can I do for you? I'm kind of tired. Yes, I'm more tired. I've been flying for eight hours. Listen, could you uh, just work with the group for a bit? Where, honestly, you're, you're kind of falling behind, and your performance has been lackluster right, lately. Uh, um, I- Ichabod's horse speaks up. Well, Mom, you got it. Always understand. <laughs> you got any apples? These it's been hard to keep these slower horses up with my pace. Maybe give let's, them some apples. Let's I look get off your high horse. Blaise, <laughs> I look at Blaze near and say, "You better not turn around and tell us they've decided to form a union." You guys aren't unionizing, are you? What's a union? Okay. Yeah, I think it's best we don't elaborate. <laughs> Is this we something like to... we should talk about? No. Uh, Salvatore, Please. you know, uh, we are we are loyal to one person and one... Well, you're loyal to me, and I'm loyal to Bowers, and that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, Salvatore kind of flicks an ear and <laughs> bows his head a little bit. Also, you're not a horse. Don't get lost <laughs> in it. It's just a form. <laughs> you know, you're getting a little too in character right now. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to quickly say, Druidic, please form a union. You get better wages and everything. Please, please. We ain't paying these horses. 
<laughs> you don't understand hey, me. What what color is Salvatore anyway? Salvatore is a big black and white horse. So he's like white on the little fluffs of his legs, and then he's got like a white stripe up his nose. Um, yeah. Okay. The, uh, I was expecting to hear that he was white, as pure as the driven snow no. or something. No, he's big, beautiful, black and white horse. So dark as Ichabod's soul. Yeah, he is like the white is the the black is the sin and the white is the, I don't know. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> he's mixed colored, like the mm-hmm. real kind of relationship Ichabod doesn't like to see. <laughs> see, it's just you bringing this up. I just want to point out it wasn't uh, me. <laughs> anyway. Um, you can continue down the road as fast as you can. Um, go ahead and make animal handling checks with advantage, every everyone, just to try to get better rolls. Twenty-two. You love it when the GM doesn't even like sugarcoat it. It's like, no, I don't think you deserve advantage. I just want you guys to roll better. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> No, you do get advantage because because of this stuff. Okay, give me a minute. My mind just arbitrarily decided to kick me out. I just feel like Salvatore's not a normal horse. He's not. He's <laughs> technically <laughs> like, not. We're just fucking around like, every Yeah. <laughs> Just like if I'm just riding him normal, it's like you're in battle, you're seamless. But when you're just riding down the road, he causes real problems. I mean, it was <laughs> it was just a group check. That's all it was. It wasn't a reflection on your personal horse. I, I'm just goofing, but yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it does cost me a spell slot, but you know. Yeah. Well, at least you have them though. But anyway, um, Blaze near your back in your normal form, so you don't need an eagle anymore. There you go. Um, Let's see. Blazner got a 22. Ichabod, you got a 17. Shokan. It's it's loading. Oh, uh, you have to reload. I, well, it just decided to kick me out arbitrarily. So, here. Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm getting there. And no blood from a stone. You cannot give advantage. Um, that's a perk I give to the Patreons. Do you want me to roll for roll for you, Shokan? Would that be easier? Probably, because it's just taking its sweet time. Well, 13. Not bad overall. Willow, what'd you get? I got a 10. Okay, but overall, uh, overall decent enough rolls that you are making a little bit better pace. It does, however, get dark before you reach the monastery. And judging by, because Blazenir was in his bird form and was able to see it, it'll probably take you another three or so hours of traveling past dark if you all wanted to try to get there as well. You could. I'm not, you have, or you could just camp out for the night. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm not that interested in the monastery. I just wanted to kill these guys. Uh, I don't honestly know why we wanted to kill them, but uh, I do agree with Because they are working for our enemy. They are? Oh, I was not paying attention. You know, yeah, clearly. <laughs> I was we established all this beforehand. Yeah, I, was up up in the air. I was I was up in the air and you know, you know. Well, it was on your head at that point. They're the they're the knights of of our head. the person we're coming yeah. to kill right now, you know. Right. Uh <laughs> I say we we stop and, and replenish ourselves. We could also just uh challenge them to a duel in the middle of town, but I don't think that's a good idea. Yes, uh y- you can choose to do that, and uh, we'll sit on the sidelines and see how well that goes for you. 
Well, you know, I have a this spell where I can, you know, I can create a little wall of fire around him. And I have this spell called Compelled Duel. I think you're on to so something. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that sounds like my kind of thing. Make a ring. <laughs> Start a fight, but it, it would just be me and me and him, unfortunately. Well, I mean, we can probably get. Uh, hey, uh, Edmund is your name. Uh, would you like to fight to these uh, fools with us? Um, not one on one. I don't think. I'm not more one on a... one. No, That's just on how one. duels usually work, well, if I am correct. I could compel a duel with the boss guy, and then and then y'all could be fighting all the other guys. Um, I, let's see when we get there. But for now, I think we should replenish ourselves, and then uh, we can have a duel in in the the daylight. I would like to under God's watchful eye. An animal while doing this, maybe that uh, whatever I became during that fight, I can't remember what I became during that fight though. All right, the, whatever the tournament. One vote for setting up camp. I sure, Joel. Sure. I mean, I don't necessarily need to rest, but I'll I'll rest with you. Oh, you need to sleep for the night. If you tra- if you travel for more than eight hours in a day, you start getting points of exhaustion. Fair. Fair. Yeah, that's fine. Let's let's sleep. Okay. I can uh, do I can do a little planta growth around us so we can be hidden as you like. Uh, that will most likely not be necessary. You don't you don't know that. All right, let's. Can we rest? <laughs> yes. Can we just do it before, before yes. we talk for another hour? <laughs> Go ahead and make a perception check to find a, or a survival check, either or, to find a good campsite for the night. Oops, I accidentally rolled with advantage. Didn't mean that. But you can all be working together, so you can have advantage for it. Oh, well, in that case, a 22. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is more of an open, plainy area, um, but. Let's see here. Open areas are so underrated. It is, but there is a bit of, of tree tree cover. Um, up to the I'm north. saying and it's a good thing because then you can see for you can okay. see out very far. And you can absolutely ju- um, find a spot off to the side of the road, a little ways away from the road, um, with enough of a clearing that you can see everything, but has <laughs> a little bit of a higher vantage point, so you're they would have to come up towards you. Yeah, and you all bring your wagons around behind this little hill, climb up it, and set up camp for the night. Somebody makes a fire. Somebody creates a meal. You all set up for the night, and um, later, I'm sure Cameron, you have a way to help out yeah. with sleeping too. Ritual mm-hmm. casting Leoman's tiny hut. Mm-hmm. I figure we can like make a circle with the wagons and then have us in the circle in the middle where I cast the hut because it's only like 10 foot radius. Yeah, so you have the the wagons positioned um, defensively around around you a little bit. Yeah, and then the circle in the middle. Sure, you can do Um, that. I want to cast Alarm. Um, About, I would say, I think it's uh, around us on the, so it's centered within that twenty foot cube. Door, or window, or an area within range. You want every time you large creature you touches. Yeah. You spell, you just... Oh yeah, you could definitely do that. So you could cre- you could create a few of those if you needed to, creating twenty foot cubes around your ten uh, foot dome if you wanted to, to give an additional layer of uh, of security. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Blood from the Stone is saying that Ichabod Sass makes him my favorite character of the group. <laughs> well, I'll thank you, sir. I tip my hat to you. <laughs> now, as you guys um, sit down, Edmund probably create makes a, a nice little stew for everybody, um, and you all settle in to um, set up your set up for the night. Is there anything anybody's wanting to do before you settle in, or do you guys just uh- want to? I cast plant growth out of spite. <laughs> Everybody does something. I, for one, am sleeping in my tent outside of all this uh, magical nonsense because I like to pray in private. 
Okay, so you set up your your <laughs> tent outside of the um, the circle and away from the alarms, and uh, <laughs> Blaze near cast plant growth. We just made this huge. Um, big tall area of grass and weeds and stuff around the base of this hill um so you kind of go to the side of the hill a little bit and pitch your tent there you can do that i'm also going to give myself a little patch so i just have a softer place to sleep sure you could you could do that within the you, you could create a little soft patch in in the middle of the um of, of the dome if you wanted to sure is there anything anybody else is wanting to do or discuss before um, we move forward in the evening? Read my book as I settle down for the evening. What book is that? <laughs> Silver Foxes and How to Hunt Them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silver <laughs> Foxes Silver and How to Hunt. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's an interesting read. It's mostly about uh, trying to pick up older men and ways to compliment them and, and to um, kind of sugar mama them a little bit or sugar sugar rabbit i suppose in your in your case wow. <laughs> but um absolutely you can all do that and with the dome um you're relatively protected for the night though ichabod you're outside of it um you guys True. wanting to do watches for the evening or are you all just going to bed uh, i can take first watch I mean, I think it'd be a good idea to keep watch. I think if you got an alarm and everything, we should be fine. Uh, Salvatore, keep watch. Spirit horse, keep watch. So it sounds like Shokan's taking the first watch. Um, Ichabod's saying, telling his horse to watch. Yeah, I'm just sleeping. You're just sleeping? All Um, through the night. Okay. Uh, Cameron's taking the last watch. Uh, There's Four watches in in an evening. Is anyone else taking watches in the night? Uh, I'll take a watch if it's necessary. It's up to you. I'm just asking. My only thing is just being able to get my eight hours so I can prepare my spells. Yeah, I'm like y'all have cast now three spells to protect yourself. Yeah, that is fair. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. We don't really necessarily need. Like, to wasn't watch. that the point of catch, casting the spells? We ain't talking about no. No, I just I wanted to have an alarm that will wake me up, but then also stay awake anyway. Magic is a tool mm-hmm. to be relied upon, but not a crutch to be depended upon immaculately. I can't hear you. I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> not to hear you. Hong Shu, Hong Shu. I've used magic to to uh, you know gain wealth for so long now. I don't understand what you're saying. You can't get a real job. <laughs> I excuse you. No, no, it's a real job. Wait, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, I figure Double Cameron's just smart enough to realize that hey, magic is great, but mm-hmm. if you rely on magic for everything. Sooner or later, it's going to fail you at a bad moment, and then you're screwed. This is not everything. This is a three-step sleeping through the night once with three different spells. Hey, I, you do uh, whatever you want to do. I mm-hmm. I just want clarification before I, I narrate. So you guys, yeah, yeah. you guys tell me how you want to do it. But anyway, um, sounds like Shokan took a watch, uh, Blazenir took a watch, Cameron took a watch, Ichabod's passed out, because uh, as she's as he's very astutely put it, everything's protected, and the dome is, uh, you know, impervious. Of course, he's sleeping outside that, so. That's true. But whatever. Um, Willow, I'm did you take protected. a watch or no? No, Willow's going to pass the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. So, you all settle in for your night. Shokan, you take your first watch, which goes by very quietly. You wake up Blazenir for his. It goes by very quietly as well. No one's there for the third watch. Blazenir just lays down and goes to bed. Cameron. Yep. Make a constitution check. Sure. 
Uh, would that be a straight check or a saving throw? I guess it doesn't matter. They're the Just same. Just check. 12. Okay. And with a 12, we'll find out what happens after the break. Cool. <laughs> we'll, be back in ten, yep, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Um, so stay tuned, everybody. Yep. 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 Okay, we are back, everybody. And when we last left off, the debauchery circus had managed to not get in a fight with a group of knights and allowed them to pass, but then decided to follow them and try to keep up to see where they were going. The group of knights eventually outdistanced our heroes and made it off into the night. The group decided to bed down and camp out um, about a couple hours outside of a monastery known as, oh, I'm blanking on the name, uh, Balin, Balin Monastery. So, as all the groups settled in for their, their night's rest, the first two watches go by very quickly, but nobody wanted to stay for the third. Cameron... With your 12 um, on Constitution, you wake up groggy, bleary-eyed. You kind of think to yourself, looking around, and then realize, oh, I need to get up for my watch. Luckily, all you had to do was beat a 10 to wake up in time. Mm -hmm. Yay. You wake up, and you've had your six hours of rest, and you... Watch for the last two hours. Nothing out of the ordinary happens. And it's very quiet. In your little dome, it's quite comfortable in there. You can control the heat. You can control pretty much everything other than other than light. But um, it's very fairly cozy. Ichabod, you're in your tent by yourself. So probably maybe a little bit colder, but still not mm -hmm. too bad. It's tents keep you fairly warm. Yep. Eventually, um, the last two hours go by, and Dawn wakes pretty much everybody up. Ichabod, make a perception check. Sure. I was at eight. Okay. You you get up at waking up from the sun, bleary eyed, and and start to rise for your morning prayer. As you do. Let's see here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as you're getting up, you feel a pain shoot through your foot. And you look down, screaming out, Ah! As you notice a snake has slithered into your tent while you slept outside oh. the dome. Um... And has bitten you. A snake, you say. Alright. <laughs> snake in the grass. <laughs> of course. Um, I would like to uh, quickly grab my long sword and... Uh, uh, first things first. Um, yeah. A 20, I, I assume, hits because you're, you don't wear yeah. armor when you're sleeping anyway. So um, It bites your ankle as you're rising. Um, you take... You take one point of piercing damage, and um, I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Nine. Okay. You also take seven points of poison damage as the snake right. uh, uh, pierces your ankle and pumps its venom into you. Um, I'm not going to make you roll for initiative for this because this isn't... I chopped the head off this snake. Yeah, and roll yeah. for an attack. Oh my god, I can't roll for anything. <laughs> yeah, with an eight, you swipe, swipe out at the, well, the snake as it's slithering back away from you. And I you make miss two attacks. So okay, you do make two attacks, that's right. And 23. 23 does hit. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah um, <laughs> that one, so 10 slashing damage. 10 slashing damage is more than enough to take out this thing. Goddamn snakes. That's why another reason I hate this country. Hey, uh, every, everything good out there? I heard a um, yelp. It's it's fine. 
<laughs> sure, you seem to have missed the snake once. No, I, but... Yeah, you know, uh, it's a wily little snake. <laughs> Actually, you can't see. I'm in my tent. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I well, there was a snake. It's dead now. Was Ichabod playing with his trouser snake? Uh, it, it seems like it. Uh, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. I think, I think that's why he wanted his own tent. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I just glare at them. Um, <laughs> Through your tent? And I, yeah. <laughs> I, I step out. I step expensive. out and I glare at them um, for suggesting such lewd things. Um, and then I'll get ready for the day. Give myself. I can lay on hands myself back to full. So. <laughs> yeah, you can, and you you touch yourself and pump a surge of healing into you with your healing hands. And <laughs> Where do to, you touch yourself? And able to heal those whole eight right points. right over my heart. There was a snake in my boot. Yeah, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna entertain y'all by saying these things. I'm not a spectacle. Oh, oh no, no we're right. already we're already quite entertained. Oh, we're heading right. out first thing. <laughs> I get on my horse. <laughs> no breakfast. <laughs> no breakfast. Oh, um, but I was getting pray, ready to cook. Oh, okay, I guess. No, uh, Edmund. No, Edmund. As a man, you should learn to eat one large meal a day. That's horrible advice. But it doesn't sound Actually, healthy at all. I would <laughs> say, Edmund, as a man, you should learn to stand up for yourself. And so when someone like Ichabod says no breakfast, <laughs> you say, the horses decide whether we have breakfast and they say they're going to eat. <laughs> that and sounds it, like the horse is making a choice for you. <laughs> Anesthetic is saying that Ichabod's just living his best life. Yeah, he's cutting heads off snakes. I keep the I keep the snake head. You keep the snake head? Okay. Yeah. You can pocket that snake head, no problem. Yes. Get some of that venom later. Pocket That's the snake head way. so he gets bit in his pants and stuff. No, no I wrap it in something. Uh, I was totally going to do that too. <laughs> no, <laughs> just take stupid. this venomous fanged head of this thing and stick it in my pants. <laughs> Put it in my inventory. Monkey anyway. Island style. I like I like how Ichabod is like a Twitch plays character and everybody can just insert. <laughs> everybody <laughs> controls Ichabod. You all just say what he does. He does it all in that order. Aw, <laughs> oh, poor Bree. <laughs> We're just messing with you. <laughs> but yes, you can you can pocket the, the snake and wrap it up in something if you want to. That's totally fine. And while that was all going on, I was just sitting there. Just munch it on some rations. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. But you are a all able to have a meal because most people are saying, go go cook, go cook. And so that's what Edmund does. And eventually you all saddle up your horses, get yourselves ready, <laughs> and head out for the day once again. So I need everyone to go ahead and give me animal handling checks. Um, you're all working together, um, so you can take this at advantage. Everybody. Uh, do I know who seems to be the worst at handling animals? That's why I've got it's... you in our cart here. Well, because I'm I'm going to use guidance on somebody, but I don't know. Oh, who, okay. So I can't do it on Ichabod. Well, or... You could do it on yourself, or you could do yeah. it on um, the people who are controlling horses are Willow, uh, Shokan, Bl uh, you, and Ichabod. Well, that's three people I can't do it on now. No, hey, but guys, you can I, choose I can't one. do it if you roll it. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll choose probably. myself, I guess. Do it on yourself, then, because everybody yep. else has already rolled. Yep. Uh, so roll your, your animal handling at advantage and add a d4. So that's hey, 26. Okay. So go ahead and give me your um, animal handling checks, please, everybody. 11. Uh, 23. Natural 20. 17. Okay. So, as a group, you are all making much better time than you did yesterday. The horses seem to be much more favorable and listening to your commands. And you all head out down the road, making decent pace. You do pass the monastery after a couple hours uh, down the road. Um, are you going to stop there, or are you going to just keep going? Um, what can we see as we're getting close to the monastery? As you're getting closer to the monastery, as I described 
for you all previously. Um, it's a square stone building, um, two stories tall. It does not have any walls or anything around it. Um, it's on top of a hill, kind of similar to the way you all were camped the night before. But there is a stone gate down at the bottom of the hill with a path leading up the hill around it towards the monastery. And as you get closer, um, you do see something kind of interesting. <laughs> this, this, uh, the the ornate nature of um, the gate depicts um, a large sunburst at the top threshold of it. In front of it are many, many stone statues of women, all raising their hands up towards the gate as though worshipping towards it. Um, you can see from the, the lower area um, on the road, you can look up to the monastery, and you can also see that there are very heavy iron doors in the stone building itself. Go ahead, Ichabod, since you're um, a paladin, go ahead and make a, um, a religion check. Yeah, I was going to say the, the symbol of the father is also a sunburst, but I can't roll good. <laughs> In the um, morning. <laughs> yeah, your your eyes are kind of bleary. It's been a couple hours since you woke up, and that that snake that bit you just kind of put you off in a, in a bit of a bad mood this morning. the The mm -hmm. sunburst does seem reminiscent of the father. You you definitely were able to make that con connection, but um, it's also different in stylization. So it, you're not entirely sure if it means the exact same thing as the father, or if it's just uh, happens happenstance that the two look similar. Mm. I don't know. That man said something that I, I deem to be kind of heretical. Um, Are we going after him because you think he's a heretic? No, I, I wasn't even actually going to advocate that we go after him, but I would not be opposed if you all thought that that was the better option, because if somebody is uh, uh, I don't know, assuming uh, the name of my faith and misrepresenting it, I wouldn't That's mind seeing that handle. Dar doesn't look like anything that was on their clothing, does it? The sunburst? Yeah, the sunburst. No. What are you having to chat? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Brandy was saying something to me. Yeah, that uh, sunburst doesn't look like what was on their clothing, does it? Uh, it does not. Okay. Um, on their uniform, on, on the breastplate itself, and on the cloaks, the cloaks itself just had one very large uh, star symbol. Um, mm -hmm. Like the way I picture it, have you ever seen like um, the Star of David depicted, kind of like a cross, but with more bursts coming out? It kind of oh, yeah. looks. So. It kind of looks sort of like that, um, yes. but black on on the blue of the fabric, and um, there's a kind of radius circle around the center of the thing, but then the, mm -hmm. the points of the star go much farther out past that. Would we be able to tell if their horses and such were still at the monastery, or would we have to go closer for that? Um, you can make a perception check. Sure. Hey, Matt, I sent you a private message. Okay. Jeez. I was Ooh, not man, rolling with advantage, so I got a 12. I was accidentally yep. rolling with advantage, but my first one was a 17. That's totally okay. Um, you're looking around the monastery. And, um, you th again, it's on a hill, so you can't see behind it, but you're looking around the grounds and the, and the hill itself, and you do not see any horses in the, this immediate vicinity. Do I see any tracks? Um, no, this is very hard-packed road. Um, mm -hmm. there, I mean... It's not. I, I'm not saying you don't see any tracks because, again, it's a very well traveled road, but mm -hmm. nothing that um, depicts whether or not you, these particular individuals have come through here. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a hard choice, um, but I'd like to hear your opinions. Uh, are you saying are you going after him or? That's the question. Is are we going after them or are we just continuing? I was simply I attempting to determine if they were even at the monastery, but as it appears, that's the where they were heading. Earth is it, rather hard packed. 
and yes. they changed course. But if, the if they ended up there last evening, then it might have only been a stopping point for the night, and then perhaps they continued on somewhere. Is that what we're checking like, right here? I was attempting to see if I could spot any indications of whether oh, or not they had left, but there don't appear to be any, and the ground is hard-packed enough that it would be difficult to tell. Uh, well... They they seemed, uh, you know, and while we were talking to them, they seemed to be pretty intent on getting to this point, and I don't understand why they would uh, get back over there and run out. And even if we wouldn't see it because we were asleep, but uh, I could bird it up and I look for them. I think we either commit to going in here or commit to going past. When, when do we have to go through the town anyway? No, it's no. a monastery. It's not a town. It's just a it's, building. It would on be a town. stopping he's, point. He's talking uh, about the town later on. Oh, I'm sorry. I do not believe that we have a specific time frame that is required of us, so it is certainly possible that we could stop at this monastery and see what's up. So. All right, let's just do it. Yes. So it's a big stone door, right? Does the door push open? Oh, so you're going up to the monastery? Yes. I guess so, yeah. Okay. The The monastery is, as I said, uh, on up top of a hill. Um, the gate before you is a open stone gate with the statues on either side. You can walk, mm -hmm. just ride your horse on through it. There's no gate or anything like that up to the monastery. The monastery itself is uh, the iron st um, iron doored building. It is not locked when you do arrive. You you all make it up about 10-15 minutes of a very the easy trail. The mo You open the door to find a very nice looking building. Um, the, where am I? The, the hall itself, as you all walk in, is made of very finely wrought, um, well-worked stone. The training hall you, you walk into has, um, pews to one side and a very elaborate, Marvel statue that Ichabod you would recognize as Balrus the father, holding a golden rod in his hand and wearing a golden amulet around his neck. I you remove see, my hat. You see quite a few um, monks walking about, and as you all open the, the doors and push yourself inside, you see two men hurrying towards you almost immediately as you step through the threshold. One is older, the other is younger. The older is a human man, um, looks to be probably around 60, 65-ish. The, the one with him is a dwarf, probably, oh, it's hard to tell with dwarves, but somewhere around the hundreds range. He doesn't have, his beard is full and dark and rich, but you don't see a whole lot of gray there. <laughs> As the two men approach you, one of them says, um, the human uh, can can I help you find folk as they approach you? Uh, Amrin is just thinking to himself, hmm, seems like these monks didn't take a vow of poverty. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about silver foxes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, it, it, I, sorry, uh, Blazing, you go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, like, but should we tell them about the thieves we ran into uh, along the road? Or I give a slight wink. Oh, he winks. All right. Well, yes. Hello, uh, sir. Uh, my name is Ichabod Sykes. I'm a servant of the Father, um, and I noticed that you all might be as well. Um, we have just stopped by this way because we did run into some suspicious characters last night who seemed to be heading in your direction, and I, I simply wanted to check on your fine establishment. Uh, well, yes, we do worship the father, Balrus, here. Balrus, the father of all, rises up Amen. high into the sky and looks down upon all of us, and our monastery is dedicated to worship of his light. We did have some travelers stay here overnight. Um, perhaps these are the men you speak of? 
yeah, there was a, a blonde man, um, and then a couple of uh, tall people. Uh, we couldn't see; they were wearing helmets, and as well as some dwarves. Yes, they did stay here overnight. Uh, three humans, the blonde man you described, and two others. And two dwarves as well. Uh, they are not here. If you are looking for them, they left early this morning. Uh, did they give any indication uh, as to where they might be heading? Why do you ask, my son? He seems well, I, uh, a little. He, 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 he seemed like willing to talk at first, but, but getting a little. So yeah. Forgive me, I, I don't mean to pry. As I said, um, they just seemed su suspicious last night, and I just wanted to make sure that they weren't, you know, causing any any trouble here nor where they're going. But um, I am happy to see that y'all were not inconvenienced. I believe he was merely trying to ascertain that they did not do any sort of harm to you and other followers like him of this uh, daddy. Was it? <laughs> Hi, Glary. <laughs> Forgive my, forgive my uh, well, small I wa friends. I was about to say uh, roll, roll a persuasion with advantage because Cameron's helping, but I'm not sure if he's helping now. Yeah, you no. know. <laughs> but yeah, go uh, ahead and roll persuasion with advantage. Guidance. Roll d4 with that. Ooh, guidance. And Thank as you. you're as, as you're saying this, Blaze Deer reaches <laughs> out and, and touches you and casts, a, and you feel a, a bit of warmth. How's a thirteen? Um, and I and I also gesture uh, to my cloak, which has a, a similar um, sign, so that he knows I, it's not just talk mm -hmm. that I am a servant of the Father, like he. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. What was your question again for them? Uh, well, I was trying to ascertain where the travelers may have went, or if they had caused any inconvenience while they were here, or perhaps what they did when they were here. Uh, they did not cause any inconvenience, no, my son. They just requested lodgings for the night and food for their horses. They, they stayed in one of our guest rooms and left a few gold crowns uh, to co compensate us for, for the space. But beyond that, they did not bother us much. Um, and the dwarf standing next to him um, says... Uh, he he did say, uh, the blonde one said something about uh, making their way towards, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, begins with a C. Uh, Coltrass Keep, perhaps? Uh, that's the place, yes, Coltrass yeah. Keep. Well, I should thank you for your time. Uh, yes, the Ish. blessings of the Father are, are with you, my son. We were about to have a service for this morning, if you would all like to join. Uh, I would put everybody else really party. excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? We've got uh, so, things. I'm, I've got uh, morning oh, rituals yeah. outside. of. I'm a druid, not a... Uh, <laughs> uh, just one more question. Uh, how long ago did they leave? They left before dawn, my son. I see. Um, we were going to offer them breakfast, but they were gone when we all awoke. I see. Uh, well, I look at everybody and shrug like, well, we ain't going to catch up to them, so my... <laughs> I'm feeding horses now. Outside? Yeah, just... <laughs> Not dealing with that. <laughs> so Blazenear just walked out at the mention okay. of a of a church service. Cameron, they uh, as soon as they mentioned gold crowns, I'm just kind of lost in thought. And then uh, uh, when you look at it, I'll just look over and go, you know, I should buy a crown. You could probably <laughs> wear it over what? your helmet. Uh. I look at Shokan. <laughs> <laughs> Shokan and Edmund. Eh? Eh? I mean, I feel like the chances of us finding where they went are fairly slim. We should have that. That's exactly, exactly where they're going. going. Yeah, we yeah, should we're, just gonna, we're just not going to catch up them. Maybe we'll come across them again. Maybe we won't. <laughs> wow, these horses really need a bunch of brushing. <laughs> Well, it seems like nobody else is really thrilled. Uh, I can I can take a message, um, but 
I, I do appreciate the offer and I, I would love to stick around, but unfortunately my duty calls me elsewhere. Very well. Blessings of the father among you all. And he, he does a little sibling. Yeah. And with you as well, my brother. And with that, the monks uh, kind of watch you all waiting for you all to leave before moving on back to their own business. You, you all head out from the, the monastery and uh, gather up with Blazenir and on your horses and set off again down the road. Your day's journey right. is not is uh, fairly easy. It's not hindered by any stretch of the imagination, and you do travel on for your the well part of the day. You do not see the riders. Um, they um, blah, 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 blah. can't talk. You do not see the riders <laughs> for, um, for this length of your journey. Wherever they are, they must have been making their trail as quickly as they can back to apparently cold trust keep <laughs> all right your second your third day of travel goes by relatively uninteresting you all make your camp you have a very pleasant evening and continue on for another two days down the trail eventually you do make your path to um, the next town on the road which is a name that I'm blinking weird second why is it not opening for me Lambrod your group makes your way to Lambrod which is a small farming community mostly wheat corn soybeans things of that nature um, there's not a lot to the town um, there isn't even a much of a wall that's around it. More of just a small stone fence that kind of uh, creates a boundary around the outer farms in this the small town itself. You manage to make your way there at, after two days of travel. Um, I assume there's nothing really there that you want to go to shop or anything like that. There is a small general store in, in like that. But for the most part, you can pass through it and continue on your journey if you want to. Yeah. Now, on your fifth day of travel, your group is making your way down a low grassland area with a bit of a higher ridge. As you're making your way down the road, you see up ahead at what the sign of what appears to be a pair of wagons that have been smashed and destroyed and is what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just basically abandoned on the side of the road. But as you guys grow, get closer to it, you, you begin to spot people moving about them. And one of them is standing in the road itself, waving their arms high up in the air. This looks like a trap. Why, hello there. <laughs> oh, something interesting is going on. Uh, Y'all look like you got yourselves in quite a pickle. Are you riding up towards them? Uh, we're, we're approaching, um, but I'll slow down once I'm like uh, 80 feet, 60 feet, perhaps. 60 feet. Keep a close eye on them. Sure, absolutely. So go ahead and make perception checks, everybody. Okay. Uh, Ten. Guide myself. God. Okay. Yeah, I, I do want to be a little bit away in front of our our wagons. Yeah, you can set yourselves up so however that, you like here. Yeah. So I'm being a little scout. I do not perceive. <laughs> it's not what I do. Now, it is 
a bit later in the afternoon at this point, probably around three, four o'clock. The sun is still high enough in the sky. So your vantage in your vision is fairly wide. Um, mm-hmm. Shokan with the 17, um, bla- you can make out that there are three humans um, in this area around um, a pair of broken down, destroyed wagons. And you can see on the ground in front of them, there are two dead horses. Um, Blaze near with your 20. 21. 21? Ah, t- okay. Tw- gotcha. With a 21. You're looking closely as Ichabod's kind of riding ahead of the rest of you. And you can see that the horses themselves, there's flies buzzing about them. And the blood is coming out of these things' heads that apparently have been smashed in is dark and tacky looking. So they've been dead for a while. The tr- the three hu- there are three humans. There's two men and one woman. Um, the woman's towards the back. The two men are fr- up front. And this one at the very front is the man who's kind of waving his arms. And he's calling out, Hello! Hello! Uh, can you assist us, please? Their mm. clothes are dirty and torn. And they all, all three of them look haggard. Okay. Um, with, with your 21 Blazenair... You can see that the cliffs here up to the north of you, probably around uh, 30, or I'm sorry, no, um, 15 feet tall. And above them, there are bushes right up in here. Mm-hmm. One of the bushes seems to be moving a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to shrug Cameron and just kind of nudge his attention towards the bushes. Just mutter, yeah. like, Hey, uh, this uh, might be. This is probably a trap. To just, you know. All right. Um, I cast mage armor on myself. I would like to move to right here, um, and then I would like to uh, use a divine sense. Okay. What does divine sense do? I will quote it for you. There you go. I'm open to my senses to good and evil until the end of my next turn. I know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of me, not behind total cover. Right. I'm going to pull out a deck and start shuffling cards in it. This, I don't know if it's going to be useful in this, but I have something. Okay. Uh, so, so, in, in six, so in 60 feet of you, you do not sense any celestials, fiends, or undead. All right. Hey, Matt. For me. Yes. Since he pointed to the bushes, which, you know, basically telling me that it's a trap, uh, I want to look at the folks that we can see. Obviously, their look is rather haggard, you said. What about mm-hmm. their bodies? Do they look like they're pretty muscular? Make a perception check. Sure. Some beefy boys. 22. Finally a good roll. (laughs) All three of them do look on the more muscular side as though they are the working types that um, use their hands quite a bit. Um, You you wouldn't call them soldiers Mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. You do not, with a 22, you do not see any weapons that are on them. Actually, no, I'm sorry, you do. With your 22... You do see that on the the ground um, near between where that that horse and the wagon is, it Mm -hmm. appears to be a giant hammer leaning up against the wagon, uh, a maul. Do any of them look like they'd be strong enough to lift such a thing? Definitely with a 22. It's, I mean... You, you, Cameron, you are not Cameron, you, Stephen, would be able to lift them all. Just Mm -hmm. swinging it, maybe not as much in a, in a very well fashion, but you could lift it up. Now, for these people, they definitely could wield it effectively. Okay. So I'll just lean over and uh, whisper to Blaze near. I see the 
small they probably used to bash in the heads of these horses. Looks well, like any, any of them could wield it as a weapon. So while that's happening, um, Ichabod, you had been riding out ahead, and the man... Yeah, standing... I want to stop right where I'm at, and I want to say, well, your horses look like they've been dead for a, a short amount of time here. Um, how might we assist you? I'm still going to be, be polite. That's, yes. how, that's how he starts it off. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to learn. What do you want me to do? Just pop out and attack them? <laughs> No, that's what they're about to do to us. Yeah, but I'm I'm like tense. I'm just polite. So the man right. that, um, steps up about ten feet um, with his arm held up, and he does say, "Yes, um, we were attacked by a, a group of men in armor, and they rode up and attacked us and took all of our supplies and killed our horses, beat us up and." And left us for dead, but but didn't kill us. Um, we need help back to town. Could you, could any of you uh, assist us? I want to roll an insight check. Go I'm just it. gonna look straight at him and go. And why couldn't any of you well-muscled individuals use that mall you have over there to defend yourselves? Uh, You're clearly not lacking the strength to wield it. Out of um, twenty on my insight. Oh, he's definitely lying. He is. Uh, full of I shit. I say stop right there, sir. Um, now I'm not sure uh, how stupid you think we all might be, but if this is some type of attempt at robbery, um, I'd like to inform you: you will fail, and you will lose your life in the process. You know, because if you have to bow us, you have to bow this, and I'm gonna pull a, de- a card from my deck of illusions and. and use I- it. <laughs> I would like to roll an intimidation if I can. Uh, I need a. Uh, well, deck. okay. So let let's uh, let. Put so, my hand uh, on my whip. So Ichabod is trying, attempting, is yelling out. You might not want to do this. Um, Science. Blaze Blazenir is uh, pulling out a deck of uh, his illusion. A deck of. I'm, playing, I'm, pl- I'm pulling out. I'm yelling. Listen, if you atta- attack us, you're also going to have to deal with this. And then also, you know, use my deck, of, pull a card out for my deck. Okay, of so how does the, the deck of illusions work? <laughs> I, need a, I need a deck of playing cards, apparently. Well, you I can just that. roll a dice, too. I can. Uh, yeah. I what, what dice would I roll? Uh, is it a full deck? It's a full deck. So roll fifty two. Yeah, so a, a full deck has thirty four cards. So oh, no, no, no. what? It's, no. A, it's oh a full gosh. deck. Of- four of clubs. Like for an actual playing. There card. you go. Like, four of clubs. I just did a random oh. deck generator. There you go. Four of clubs. Okay. So four of clubs. Four. Yeah, it doesn't have a four of clubs. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, this is. Hmm. Okay. Uh, five of hearts. <laughs> five of hearts. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, roll a d32. You can actually do Oh, that. 34 cards. Yeah, do a, roll a d34. It, I guess it has all, all of those cards. I thought it would... Uh, okay. Huh. Just roll a d20. Just roll a d20. Make this easy. Yeah, just... just... Roll a die, go down the list till you get to the right number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So ten. that would be it the ma- ki- It What'd makes the uh, Archmage and Mage Apprentices. Apprentices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so Blazenir pulls out, out this deck, says, Okay, if you're going to fight us, you got to deal with this. Pulls out a card Arch- and... <laughs> Two an, an old man, <laughs> an old man and a younger man wearing robes <laughs> appears on the ground in front of him, I looking am... menacing. I'm Our looking... friend, the Archmage, <laughs> and his friend. I, I look at it disappointed. Obviously, uh, um, the much cooler. The moment you do this, <laughs> do I get to make my intimidation? Oh, <laughs> go for it. Make your intimidation. One. That's a nat 20 for a 27. 
have been Medusa or a beholder. Hey, Matt. <laughs> Or yeah, dragon. Okay, when did we start watching Rick and Morty in this D and D world? I honestly don't know, but um, so Blazenear muttering to himself about the the illusion of a, two mages appearing in like, front of him. Um, Ichabod, imagine that. What are you saying to him? Intimidate these guys once again. What I had said to him was. Uh, if you really want to go through with this, um, it would not be easy, and you may lose your life in the process. And then I flip my my little coat um, and put my hand on my whip. Okay. Um, you do this with your natural 20 for a 27. The man in front of you backs up a little bit, takes ten a few handful of steps backwards, and he looks at the rest of the group. They seem taken aback and surprised. So I presume y'all are going to let us pass uh, unaccosted. Is that correct? The, the man, uh, the woman in back kind of holds her hands up and says, Look, look, we were just wanting some help if you were not yeah, looking. We, we ain't falling for that. So I suggest you start speaking truth. Matt. Yes. Uh, I'm going to look at them and say, oh, some help. Yes, I can give you some help. Uh, I am a gardener by trade, so I will help you out by doing a little gardening. Uh, I'm going to cast a chromatic orb for fire directly at the bushes where they were rustling in such way as to attempt to set the bushes on fire. Yeah, get them. Okay, yeah, why not? Um, roll for bush. Roll for bushfire. You know, even an so, mage would have been would have been terrifying. I rolled a thirteen. I am not necessarily looking to hit any particular creature, just the bushes yeah. in the general area. Okay, um just show, fire. show me with your uh your little thingy here, um, where you're trying to hit. Sure, where did we see the rustling? In the bushes above the the cliffs. You you just saw them kind of shaking okay. a little bit. You so know? Like here is fine. That is some of the bushes, yeah. Um, yeah. If that's where you're throwing it, that's fine. Yep. Okay. You launch this, or, this uh, chromatic orb of fire shooting through the air. It smacks into the bush and explodes a little bit. The bush is uh, a, a young bush, very green, very vibrant. Um, wherever it hits, immediately scorches, and you see a big burn mark go th right through this um, the leaves of there, and you can see a bit of a cinder there, and some flames begin to spark at the bottom and start to light up. As the fire oh. goes, um, you see a bit more rustling back there, as though someone is pushing past, but you do not see them. That's fine. I look over at place near and go, ah, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Just the illusions? Apologizing for setting the bush on fire. Oh, that, that, sorry, I'm still, like, I am just disappointed in the, what I pulled out. That is, like, I guess it's better than cobalt. Uh, no, it's fine, I start fires for a living. Well, the the th the two men and the woman um down there look amongst e each other as you just threw this orb. Mm -hmm. They 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 seem to be weighing their options. The woman begin backing up towards the cliff itself, um as though to put her back between that and you all. Mm -hmm. The man next to her is also starting to head in that direction, and the man who is originally spoke to you turns around and runs back behind the wagon and says, We don't want any trouble! We don't want any trouble! Don't All attack right. us! Leave us alone! Um, Can I just ask, what's with the people in the bush? That's all it is. Just is that your, am, your ambush? <laughs> the ambush. Uh, the three don't. of them seem to be running uh, at this point, Blaze near. They're all, they're all running around... Um, intimidated completely by that nat 20 and the spells being thrown around. Um, oh, nice. I gesture for them to start taking the wagons um, past on my on my lower side so that as we walk by I can keep an eye on these people. 
Yeah, that's boring. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, they, I... they were actually trying to attack us. They could have you know, been lying about what happened and not been attack, trying to attack. But uh, yeah, I was just curious. I, I, well, I was if, you, if you wish to ask them questions, you can ask them as you walk by. They're, they're, they're definitely right. running right now. They're running yeah, along oh. this cliffside. Well, okay, so they're just continuing to run away. They're not yes. putting their backs to it. You know, I could stop them with a giant wall of fire. As soon as we're close enough, just, Matt, yes, I'm going to cast Mage Hand and use it to grab that maul of theirs. Yeah, I would like to look over the stuff here if they're running away from their cards. They're definitely running away from, from your group. And if as you're uh, no. riding up towards it, you do spot two more men... Um, I'm not going to make you roll for this. Running mm -hmm. away from those bushes that you had seen, and mm -hmm. seem to be running in the direction away from you. That's I'm going to cast powers. detect magic on myself. You're casting what? Detect magic. Okay. So apparently, I had that uh, prepared. Just See make, making anything. sure that way, even if they come back, they won't have a weapon to try and threaten other folks with. You can pick up the mall. It was lying okay. there on the ground. Um, yep. It is a just basic mall. A a uh, stone uh, club on a stick. No, that's basically. that's fine. I don't. Yes. I don't really care about actually having it. I just want to make sure that they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, Ichabod, go ahead and make a perception check, as you said you wanted to look over the wagons and stuff. Sure. It's a twelve. You you ride up to the wagons and, and take a glance around, and as. Um, the group had uh, mentioned previously the horses are long dead. Um, they've definitely been dead for a few, if if not a few days, maybe even a week or more. Um, the wagons themselves seem to have been smashed up by probably that mall and the, whatever else those other people were carrying. They definitely look like they're bludgeoned and smashed up with something heavy and strong. Um, there are some broken crates and things of that nature, some ripped up fabric, but it, it as you're looking, you don't really see anything of value. It's definitely looking to your trained eye as though this has been staged. Yeah. Nothing uh, worse than a thief. Is there anything magical among the Rubble. There is people. not. Um, other than your companions, you all blink magic. They 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 shine like a bright beacon. But apart from oh. that, no. I'm going to take a five gold coins and just kind of flick them at the people. The people are gone. They ran away. They're gone. They, they're gone. Oh. They, yeah. they they ran. You can see them. Um, you yeah, haven't been there very it. long, but they're running away and they're making their way around this ridge. Looks like they're trying. One of them's trying to climb up it at a lower point place right now, but they don't seem to be interested in fighting your group. I'm going to call oh, it. Yeah. Hey guys, listen, if you guys are going through a rough time, you can just beg. I don't believe it. Like, I would give you, I'm going to, I was, I can give you coins if you need it. Go find a real job. We ain't got no handouts. <laughs> I'm, listen, Ichabod, sometimes it's not impossible to get I'm coins. a conservative. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. sometimes you know they're looking for people with experience. You're just out of college, and no, college back in my day, every, every place you had, every place I'm there is one experience. An hour, and I pay for my whole. Life. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> if uh, none of you wish to use this, I'm simply going to break it then. Yeah, it looks nasty. I so, can. Yeah. I'm just gonna make sure that it is unusable as a weapon. Okay, how are you doing that? Uh, well, it's basically just like a big haft on the end of like a, a wood handle, right? Yeah, basically. So if I break it off in like several places... Yeah, I know. I'm just saying you're a tiny rabbit. How are you breaking it? It doesn't um, matter. I'm just fine. I'm handing it to the monk and saying, <laughs> hey, can you break this in a couple of places so they there can't use it as a weapon anymore? That makes a bit more sense. I was just messing with you, Cameron. Um, but yes, you, you with Shokan's help, you absolutely could break up this mall and, and leave it there. And you could even smash up the, the carts more if you wanted to. No. No. No, I just figured if they tried to come back, they might try and grab that and, you know, pull the same gig again. And so I wanted to make sure they didn't have any weapons to do it with. Yeah, make an uh, intelligence check, Cameron. Sure. That's what I do best. 
Unless I roll a three. (laughs) Perhaps. I'm going to do a coronal shift and roll (laughs) that. It's probably not that. I'm not that dumb. (laughs) It's a 12. I'm only 12, though. Yeah. um, So Anesthetic is uh, wanting to give her inspiration to Blaze near. Um, Mm Mm-hmm today uh not much time left in the episode but you might get to use it um with your 12 in- intelligence you get the idea just looking around this scene that this is definitely a good place for bandits to pr- try to pick off unwary mm-hmm. travelers mm-hmm. that's probably what this was yeah uh, i'm gonna set the carts on fire as we pass through oh. <laughs> <laughs> why not fair enough we could still fight somebody in the last 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> well, you could have, but... We could I don't just kill fight. people, though. <laughs> I mean, we did fight. We just won. And you just they won chose, very They chose not to throw a, throw a punch. I fought yes. them with my, with my intense presence. Indeed, you did. And you won the day. As long as they on fire, honestly. Yeah, um, as you're passing it, Blazner, you can absolutely uh, produce flames and uh, throw a few fireball, little fire spouts at this th- um, the wagons and set them ablaze. That's no problem whatsoever for somebody like you. Set them ablaze near. Yep, set them ablaze near. And with that, um, you continue making your way down the path. Um, you do eventually pass the um, the point where the, those bat. Probably probable bandits had climbed up and are running, f- heading as far north as they can away from you. You can't see them in the distance, but you all kind of wave at them as you pass and continue making your way down the road. Uh, I could probably mess with them even more. No, um, <laughs> that would not be worth your time. The the, the, the illusionary archmage and his apprentice have, are just kind of walking behind, or really floating behind <laughs> the um, the wagons, following you for. I'm not even sure how long the thing lasts, but I can get used to this. Too long, <laughs> way too long. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, much it lasts either. It doesn't even say how long it lasts. We're we're gonna say we're gonna say for an hour. Does the illusion last until the card is moved or until it's dispelled? Oh, there you go. So it just so it's just there perpetually. <laughs> I, th- I think it probably really. if if you pick the card back up, maybe or actually yeah, no, actually you can't it probably even just stays where it was. Yeah, you just yeah. throw it down. It stays where it is. If you move the card, it uh, disappears. It goes away. But, so, but you just... didn't. So you just oh, left it there. there. There's now an archmage. <laughs> There's now an illusionary yeah, archmage. His <laughs> apprentice. Never need that. <laughs> it's just there on the road, just standing there. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's gonna get a real scare. <laughs> Hope legends are now rich about it. <laughs> Why that? That. Oh boy. <laughs> you continue on down the road, making your way closer and closer towards your destination of uh, of Cold Trask Keep. Another day goes by, and at the um the evening of your sixth day, you make it to Turna. Another um village. This is more of a fishing village uh, it has a small port um and quite a few boats out on the harbor all of which are fishing fishing vessels the town itself reeks of fish no doubt but there is a small amount of trade um that comes through here and um makes its way to the rest of uh, the kingdom of radagast and you know as you arrive there late that evening that Coltrast Keep is two short days' travel to the south along the main road from Tur- Turna. You're able to find lodging at the inn and actually have a relatively decent night's sleep. I don't know if anybody wants to do anything in Turna, but if not, you can have a nice breakfast sure. of fish stew and porridge. Um, your the um the cost of the inn for the night was only um three silver per person. It's fairly cheap. 
Okay. Uh, if well, my party will allow me, I do have someone I would like to just pop in on for a bit. Interna. I have uh, a backstory person in here. Sure. Uh, it's a it's a herbalist. She runs a herbalist. Uh, who is that? Uh, Celine. Okay. It's. Do you do so, you uh, head there when you first arrive in Turna in the evening, or do you wait until the morning? I'd probably wait until the morning. Okay. So in the morning, as the the rest of the group is just preparing for their journey, you pop into a small stone and wood building with a gray thatched roof. Inside, you see the familiar woman. Uh, what's her name again? Sorry. Celine. Celine, thank you. I was yeah. blanking. Um, somewhere, but... Yeah, I know. It's, it's on your sheet. I just... I, I, saving time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You walk in and you see the elderly woman, Celine, um, m- moving about her shop, uh, filling a, a couple of the, the little baskets she keeps out front. And when she sees you, her face just comes up and alights. Please, near. What are you doing here, love? I'm just uh, passing through. Uh, you know, I don't remember you being elderly. <laughs> well, I don't remember you, this person at all, so you yeah, just... Um, she's, I'm trying to find where I put all this stuff. <laughs> You're just like, hmm, turn that. <laughs> well, no, because I had it written out. I had the description right yeah. It just says, a female herbalist in Turna. Uh, it's, it's one of my Google Docs. I have so many. Uh, yeah, tall, blonde, where's... Uh, that's... All I had on her, really? Christ. So, there you go. She's a tall, blonde woman. She's slightly elderly. When I say elderly, for you, I mean more like mid-50s or so. Uh, okay. I guess. Yep. Well, what can I do for you, Blazenir? It's so good to see you. Uh, just uh, popping in on an old friend, uh. You know, was in town. I uh, wanted to see, you know, make sure the place wasn't burnt down again. Uh, ah, no, uh, not not since last time. Uh, you haven't been by, so we're uh, no, no new fires. Um, well, but would you like some tea? Excellent. Oh, uh, tea. Uh, do we have time for tea? I think we have time for tea. Sure. Why not? No, no one's with you. So yeah, absolutely. No one's with me. Oh, never mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then yeah. I mean, not unless you asked somebody to. I thought we were just uh, getting, no. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I'm I'm me. I have. <laughs> I I would like to very quickly uh, in the morning while he's doing this pop into a a church if there is one because I know uh, I was told my wife was going to Port Suliard, so she must have passed through here. So I just wanted to see if I could get any additional information. Okay. Um. There is a small church of the five. Um, Blaze, while Blazner is having tea with his old friend, Celine, you head over to a small building. When I say small, I'm, I'm like, think frontier town style mm-hmm. uh, church building n- made up of wood and a little bit of driftwood. Um, just a single building. When you walk inside, they don't even have statues. Just um, small uh pictures that have been painted on the walls to depict the five gods. Mm-hmm. There so is an, about this town reminds me of home. There is a, a man who who is inside, a priest of middling years, probably close to your age, who um who smiles as you arrive and says, Ah, welcome, what can I do for you? Oh ah I, I see you are a servant of the father. That that is so uh Kina, my name is Ichabod Sykes. Um, uh, well, blessings of the Father upon you, Mr. Sykes. Um, are you here for service this morning? Unfortunately, uh, my duty compels me to uh, continue on my travels, um, but I, I figured coming to a familiar place, uh, I might be able to get some information about something I've been following. Um, have y'all had a, a woman named uh, Prudence Nightingale pass through here? Um. The man thinks back for a little bit. Um, it might have been some time ago. 
Make let's see. Make a history check, and we'll see how much history. You know. Not very good at that, but I got a twelve. Twelve, not bad. He he sits there and thinks for a few moments. Uh, I'm sorry, but um, I I don't recall anyone named uh, Florence Nightingale. Pr- Prudence. Prud- I like mine better, but no. Prudence Nightingale. Um, I, I'm I'm sorry, my son. Uh, do you are you sure she passed through here? Well, I heard uh, up in North America that she was on her way to a Port Suliard, um, which I have uh, seen via map is somewhere in this direction. I just thought maybe she had passed by. I I I am familiar with Port Suliard. I'm from there myself. Um, it is farther to the east of here. Uh, not many ships stop here in Turna with, um, unless they are fishing vessels. Most ships that pass um, through heading to Port Suliard do not stop here. Oh, I see. So perhaps she boarded a ship from North Amia and sailed all the way to Port Suliard. Well, thank you. Uh, nonetheless, you have been of some help. Um, Blessings of the Father be with you. And be with you as well, my son. Have a p- very well day. Yeah. Um, Blazenir, you spend the the morning um, just catching up with your old friend, drinking tea, talking old times. Um, she inquires uh, why you're back in this area and, and what you're doing and that sort of thing. Um, how how honest are you with uh, her? Yeah, I just, I just straight up tell her I'm off to war. <laughs> off to war oh that sounds horrible what why why are you why are you going to what war what war uh well you see uh contrast keep there's been some uh you know that uh, new veritude guy you know that's running everything you know oh, yeah yes i, I I'm, he's a horrible horrible person he's raised our taxes <laughs> twice in the last year and so you know tyranny and uh I could probably make a good story off of it. I don't know. Mostly, it's just I'm with a group that, uh, you know, and I haven't been with an actual group in a while. So, you know, might as well join them. And see that, what well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear you have to go through all that. But if you're if you're if you're going if you're hel- helping to deal with that tyrant, Lord Veritude. Um, that, that all for the better. Is there anything I could do to to assist you? Uh, spist? Uh, I don't know if there's anything you can do to spist me. Uh, Give me some herb. I, I guess I could... Uh, that dang chronic. Maybe she'll give you a discount on health potions. I could uh, buy a health potions full price to help you out. <laughs> I, mean, I, I I do have uh, uh, some some healing potions if you, if you need some blaze near, um, or any uh, I do have other types of potions as well. Is there anything in Ooh. particular you you could use? Uh, me personally, you know, I've got my own healing, so I don't really need to. I, I don't know what my uh, companions need. That's it, what it, she's got in stock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not here, Cameron. The, the voices are well. Um, if you if you just need again. if you just need health potions, I I do have some here. I have um three greater healing potions that I just made up a, a couple days ago that I haven't sold yet. If if that would help you. Uh yeah. How much for all three? How much indeed? I don't remember. <laughs> Let me look. You remember back to when Ichabod got bit by that snake, and you're like, hmm, I should get some anti-venom. <laughs> I remember to when Ichabod got bit by a snake and laugh. <laughs> when Ichabod well, got bit by a know. snake and thought it was hilarious. So, um, he, she said she does have greater healing potions. These are m- more ex- quite expensive. Um, for you... She's willing to sell them for twelve hundred gold a piece. Twelve hundred oh, a piece. Ugh. Yikes! However, she also does have four moderates that she will sell you at with your discount. They would be uh, two hundred and fifty each. Greater right. normally is sixteen hundred. Wow! How much do those heal? Uh, Forty-four plus four. Oh, okay, yeah. So. Moderates are 250. 
I'll buy one grader for moderates. Yeah. One grader for moderates. One grader and four moderates? Yeah. Okay. You can go ahead and mark that off, the, the coin off on your character sheet, and you can write down you have one grader and four moderates for 2,200 gold. And uh, do you have anything like particularly interesting in stock? The voices are telling me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the metagaming voices in your head. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yes, dear, I do. I, I actually I have a uh, a potion of flying here that I made a few days ago. I do have some anti venom um, as well, and um, po a few potions of resist poison as well. We don't really need any uh, anti-venom or poison things. The only okay. one that uh, gets poisoned is the one that tries to sleep outside the impenetrable dome we have. Ah, ah I see, I see. Yeah. Um, but I do have this potion of flying for 400 gold. Um, I, she, so, I mean, she has potions. Of, she has a lot of potions. Spider climbing. Most of the resist elements she could... Um, hook spider you up climb? with. A, she, she has a, one potion of spider climb. Uh, how much is that? Uh, 200 gold. Alright, I'll do that. Okay. And Port Leon has a ice sword. Just so you know. I have not forgotten. Yeah, that's why he's Blaze Near's sworn enemy. Because mm -hmm. fire and ice. That's why I have my ring of warmth. She does have some um, potions to resist ice, if that's what you're looking for. Um, she she has I two of them. About his ice sword. That's fair. So. <laughs> Just playing in the head. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I wouldn't have any clue to get that, so I'm not going to. That, that's good RP. And honestly, I have uh, ice things for or ice resistance for when that comes up. So that's also another thing, but mostly to, I wouldn't know. Is there anything else you need, Blaze Near? Uh, not that I can think of, but uh, I'm sure when I tell my friends I have an herbalist friend, uh, you know, they're going to be <laughs> trying to get that discount. And probably would think of a hundred different things that they need. Well, if, if 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 you and your friends need anything, you, you can always stop by, dear. I'm always happy to help. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for the tea. It's exquisite, honestly. Do, do you grow you grow this uh, tea yourself, right? I do, actually. There's a, a, yeah. a tea tree out back. Would you like some? I can send some would, with you. I would love some. And she packages up probably a, about a, a good four ounces of loose leaf tea that she puts in a brown sack and hands to you. Thank you. This is going to get me through the old nights. Actually. <laughs> well, you, are do, there... you do make your way back to the inn, and I suppose you do you let everybody know that you have a herbalist friend? I suppose, yeah. Why not? Okay, what were you about to say, Cameron? I was going to say, uh, even though this is a small town, there'd probably be like a, a metal worker in town, right? Yeah, there, there's um, somebody who who uh, does metal work, more horseshoes and uh, fishing uh, equipment, things of that nature. But yes, mm -hmm. there is definitely a blacksmith in town. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, so I'm gonna go talk to them then, I guess. Okay. See if they can point me in the direction of themselves or somebody who could do just like a uh, small. Metal, uh, like symbol for uh, placing upon a piece of clothing. So, are you you're looking for like a brooch or something like that? Kind of. Um, uh, if it's uh, if, if it's a simple one, they could make it for you themselves. Yeah. Um, if it's if you're looking for something a little more ornate, um, they tell you you probably want like a jeweler or something like that. But something simple out of wrought iron, um, they could make for you. What what are you tr what are you wanting them to make? 
There you go. Okay. Where'd you send it to me, Ed? Uh, just Discord. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. Um, like I said, if you're wanting a, a simple wrought iron something, it's not going to have a whole lot of detail. He could probably yeah. make it up for you in a, in a, a couple hours. Gotcha. If you're wanting something uh, a lot more elaborate, um, mm. it takes longer. And if you're wanting something like super elaborate, then like like made out of gold or silver or things of that nature, you'd probably want to find a jeweler. Gotcha. So it's up okay. to you. If you if you if how you, much how much would the wrought iron cost me? Um, probably three gold. It's it's not very big, and it's n not a whole lot of, of work to do. He, okay. he he shows you. Um, uh, I could I could make something like this. Uh, with these iron nails here, and pound them out flat, and and work them together with some screws and and some wire, and and, and heat it all up to be a solid piece, and and and, and affix a pin. For okay, it. I'll I'll skip it for now, but I'll thank him and be on my way. Okay. Yeah, something like that he, he could definitely do. It wouldn't cost a whole lot. That's fine. Okay. Um, so you all, I, I imagine you probably were doing this at the same time Blazenir and Ichabod were yeah. out. Uh, Shokan, you're probably more just um, meditating, getting yourself ready for the day. Willow, what were you up to during this time? Just relaxing, not... You know, not doing too much. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Well, uh, you know, it's that's probably a good place to end things for this evening. Relaxing and preparing yourselves um, for the next leg of your journey. So, um, we'll just end things here. Good job tonight, everybody. Um, circumvented two possible uh, fighting encounters. So, good job there. <laughs> that's boring. I know, I hate it because I want to fight. Yeah, no, uh, it's been three weeks. I wanted to, you know, burn yeah, someone. But... Ichabod has never been in a fight this, since he was introduced. Uh... <laughs> and that's why, I put, that's why I put two of them in front of you. But I also just can't just kill some bandits if I can yeah. scare them off. So sure you can. Scare people with my whole thing. If they had attacked us, then yeah, I could morally justify it. But... Yeah, but with a nat 20 on, on that... In, um... Yeah. It's, it's just like yeah no uh, arm armed group of uh, scary <laughs> throwing magic now nah, we're we're good <laughs> yeah but that's okay other than, other than fighting my best thing is intimidation so I guess that's fine yeah that's totally fine but um good job tonight everybody uh, thank you everybody who watched this afternoon we absolutely appreciate you tuning in uh, come back next Monday and see what happens when this group finally uh, makes their way to the town. Of Coltrast Keep. Have a great evening. We love you very much. And we'll see you next Monday. Good night. Bye.